Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to look at the magic of using the worksheet event in Excel VBA. So the worksheet event is very, very powerful. It's quite easy to use, but you can run into problems with it if you don't know what you're doing. So you've got to be very careful. So in this video, I'm going to show you a few simple precautions to take, and then you can get started using the worksheet event. Now, if you like this video, please click on the like button below as it really helps with the algorithm. And if you want to get notified of my upcoming videos, then please click on the subscribe button. So let's go ahead and get started looking at the worksheet event. So what is the worksheet change event? Well, the worksheet change event is basically an event that happens when we change the value of a cell on a worksheet. And we can take advantage of this by getting code to run. So an event is simply a sub. We can put code in and an event runs when a particular event occurs. So that's simply what we mean by an event. So for example, if we put G in the cell B2, it'll run code that I've written already and it will change the cells beside it to the color green. Now if I change the value to B, it then changes to blue. And you can see that this code is running every time that this cell changes. So if I change it to Y, you can see it changes automatically to yellow. And then if I delete it, it just removes the color. So you can see this is very, very powerful indeed, because when values change in a cell, we can get certain code to run. So let's have a look at the code that we use. This is the code that we use to change the colors. So it's quite simple. It takes the letter as a parameter and it takes the range where we want to change the colors. And then based on the letter, it selects which color to put in the range. So it's very, very simple indeed. But how do we do this with a worksheet event? Well, let's have a look at that. Now, the name of the worksheet that we want to change is called color. And you can see it here in the worksheet project window. So you can see SH color and color, and we double click on this and it opens the worksheet. Now in the top left, it says general, but we select worksheet. And then in the right hand side, in the drop down, you can see that it brings us all the different events that are available. Now, a quirk with VBA is that it automatically selects a event if one isn't picked. So as soon as we change to worksheet in the top left, if there is no event in it, then VBA automatically adds an event. But we can just delete this when we have the event we want. Now we're interested in the change event. So this means when a value changes in the cell, we want something to happen and we can delete this. So let's explain what the worksheet change event is. What happens is someone changes a value in the sheet, then this sub runs and when it runs, it provides us with the cells that were changed. So let's see how that works. So let's just put a value in D3. And you can see this event ran and we've got the target. So let's step in and the target you can see says four. But if we add the target to the watch window, and then let's have a look at the watch window, let's put in address. You can see that the address of the cell is D3. So D3 changed. Now imagine we have values in, in E3. And we step through the code, and you can see this time the target address is E3. Now we can have more than one cell, so for example, if we deleted the values in both of these cells, you can see this time that we've got a range D3 to E3 as the target. So that's basically the worksheet event. And now that we have a worksheet event, we can basically add any code we want into the event. So let's go ahead and start putting the code into the worksheet change. So we want to call the colors. So set cell colors and we pass it the target and the value. And that's basically giving us the letter. And the second thing that we want to pass it is the range that we want to change. So we can say active sheet because it's going to come in here on the active sheet. And we simply say range and C2 to C4. So let's put a letter in here and see what happens. We put the letter G and it works. So you can see that it's quite straightforward to get it to work. However, there's a few things we need to keep in mind. If I, for example, add a letter into B6 and say that's G, it automatically changes it to green. 
and if I add the letter Y here, it automatically changes it to yellow. So we only want it to work on a particular cell, and in this case, the cell is B2. So how we do it is as follows. We use the application intersect function. So application and intersect. And what we do is we give it two ranges and it will give us back the cells in those two ranges that intersect. So two ranges are of course target and active sheet B2. So what we want to say is if they don't interact, so if there's no intersection between these, what we want to do is we want to skip out of the function. So we say, if this returns nothing, so it'll return nothing if there's no cells that are in common, and we want to go to done. So done is a label at the bottom of our sub, and we just do an exit sub from there. So now let's try this code again and see exactly what happens. We're gonna change this letter G to the letter B. You can see it has no effect. So let's delete these, still has no effect. Let's try red and it still has no effect. But if we make the change in the cell B2, you can see that it made the change. So let's put a breakpoint in so we can see exactly what's happening. If we change here, so we put in B, it checks if the, two, the current cell that we've changed, if that intersects with B2, and if it doesn't, as in this case, it returns nothing, then it goes to done and exits. Now, in this case, if it does intersect, so it isn't nothing, then it continues on and it sets the cell colors as we expect. And you can see the cell colors are blue. Now there's a second thing that we want to keep in mind. Sometimes we only want to make a change if one cell has changed. So for example, in this case, somebody could change the value in a lot of cells by hitting delete. And we run into trouble because it's trying to set the target value. And that doesn't make sense because the target value is just one letter. When we do the target value for multiple cells, it's going to give us back an array. So we want to have a second kind of test here. And what our second test is, is if we say the target and we say the cells dot count is greater than one, then go to done. So in other words, if more than one cell is selected, then we're out of here. So let's do this again. We do B. You can see that it goes in and everything is okay. And let's clear this breakpoint. And we do G. You see everything is okay. Now we do F, there's no difficulty. And then if we go and we select a lot of cells and we select delete, it doesn't do anything. So the code doesn't run because it's basically saying that it doesn't make sense. Now it depends on our application. In this case, we could get it to change and basically say, we're just gonna take the cell B2 of that range or and then we'll, we'll, we'll base it on that. So it depends really on the application. But in a lot of cases, you just want to make a change if one cell is updated. So that's something to keep in mind. So one thing we've got to be very careful of because it could crash Excel and that is keep calling events. So have an event, call another event, call another event and eventually Excel will crash because it's in a never ending loop. So how that can happen is basically if we were to go in here and we were to say, let's change. So active sheet. So the cell that we've just been dealing with. So, and that is B2. So imagine that we came along and we set the value. So after we make the change, we set the value to equal something else. So we could do this inadvertently or we could do it deliberately, but we don't realize the consequences. Let's put the breakpoints here and the breakpoint here. Now we'll go back to the cell and let's add, and we'll, we'll put red in it here and just see what happens. So everything is okay. It'll step through this code fine, step through this code fine, and it sets the, the cell color. But now what we've done is we've changed this cell. So we've changed this cell and this causes it to go back into the worksheet change event because we've changed this cell. And it jumps, changes the color, and then we're setting the cell again. So this calling it to go back. Now, if we look at the call stack, 
So we do control L. You can see that worksheet change event has been called by a worksheet change event, which has been called by a worksheet change event. And this will actually go on forever until it basically crashes Excel, until Excel runs out of stack space, which is where it stores all these subs or functions. So what we should do before we continue on with our change event is we should do application dot enable events equals false and then when we're finished we basically say it equals to true so in done we basically can turn them back on now we don't really need to run this again the first uh, until uh, we don't really need this code until after we've done our checks now we can put it before it, it really just depends now that we have the code let's see how exactly this runs so we say b we do the normal checks we step through the code it's turned off events we've set the cell colors and now we're setting the range b2 to be equal to the value g and the code just continues on sets the enable events on and exits the sub and you can see that it's set the value to blue even though we've set the cell to G at the end, it doesn't run again. So this is very important to turn off events in this case. Now you don't always need to do it. Depends on the scenario that you're working with, but you should be very much aware of it. So you've got to be very, very careful with the events. And in most cases, it's better to turn them off. Now, sometimes you might run the code. So let's put a comment here. Or actually, let's do it in a different way. So let's run this code again, and we're going to do it to red. So we run the code to red and then what happens is we've run the code and maybe there was like we've set enable events to false and then maybe something went wrong with the code and we stopped it so we stopped the code right here and then we go back and we say okay let's set it to green and and nothing's happening and the reason nothing's happening is because the event is now off and we've got to turn it on again now this it might seem kind of obvious now but this is something that can happen and you mightn't be aware of why suddenly the events aren't working so to get it to work you basically can take this code and i'll just bring it up to make it clear so we put the code into the immediate window like this and just press enter and this will turn the events back on so you can you can run code in the immediate window like this it's quite useful so now when we select G, and you can see we do B, it works fine. We do B outside, there's no problem. We do G here, you can see it changes to G, to green, and we do Y here, it changes to yellow. So just to conclude on what we do in the worksheet event, in a lot of cases, we want to check the number of cells that have been changed, because generally speaking, we only want to do something if one cell has changed. The second thing is that important is we want to check which cell has been changed because we're going to do different things based on the cell that's changed. So we need to know what that is. And we do that using application intersect. Now, another very important thing is to turn off events because it can cause our application to crash or it can actually cause Excel itself to crash. So you've got to be very careful. And also the thing to keep in mind is if your events are not running, they just don't seem to kick off. It could be because you have enable events set to false. So you can easily set it to true by just running it in the immediate window. Or you can just run a sub on its own that just does application enable events equals true. So that's the video on the worksheet change event. I think you will have found some very useful information there. If you liked the video, please click on the like button. And if you want to get notified of my upcoming videos, then please click on the subscribe button. And don't forget to go to the description below to get the free cheat sheet if you haven't already. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you've got queries or comments, please leave them in the section below. See you on the next video.